A zoonosis is any disease that's naturally transmissible between people and animals, and it could be bacterial, it could be viral, it could be parasitic, or could be through other infectious agents. The majority of uh, emerging infectious diseases are in fact from of uh, zoonotic origin. Around 60% uh, of uh, the of such diseases are are known to have been transmitted from animals, and only in very exceptional circumstances do we have the right combination uh, that means that we are facing something of, of global impact, uh, such as the, the current COVID-19 epidemic. Diseases can move from animals into humans in numerous and sometimes complex ways, including direct contact with livestock or with uh, captive wild animals or with pets, both exotic and, and domestic pets. And this can both be the direct contact with, with the animals themselves or perhaps contact with, uh, with some of their secretions, including saliva, blood, urine or, or fecal matter. But the pandemic potential of a zoonotic disease is strictly linked to the ability of that disease to pass between people. Um, so it needs to involve both contact and a specific disease that's able to transmit directly between people. So how did COVID-19 pass between animals and humans? There's a lot of debate in this area, there's a lot that we don't know and might never know, but there's evidence that coronaviruses that infect people originated in bats and rodents. We know that coronaviruses can have intermediates in pigs, cattle, palm civets, dromedary camels and other species. And there's a lot of uncertainty about the exact path that COVID-19 took to reach people. The virus with the closest match has been found in several horseshoe bat species, and this indicates that this could have been an ancestral origin of the virus, but even the closest relative of these doesn't have a strong capability to infect people. We know that situations that involve close contact between multiple wild species, domestic species and people, may allow for recombination, combination of different viruses, more distantly related viruses, to create a new type. Um, and this could have pandemic potential. For our work, we, we looked at all categories of, of animals, so both livestock, but also um, animals which, which are wild but farmed. Uh, so for instance, civets or, or bamboo rats. Uh, but also we looked at uh, pets, both uh, exotic and, and uh, domestic pets, and um, therefore we, we included all, all categories of, um, of animals. And we believe that um, this is very important going forward. So who is at the root of the cause of disease emergence? Is it people or is it animals? Unfortunately, it's definitely people. And that's because how our societies interact with wildlife, wild spaces, directly or indirectly, is driving changes and this is increasing pandemic risk. Every day we're coming into closer and more intense contact with wild animals in wild spaces, converted spaces and domestic animals in farmed and other settings. It's a lottery but every single day we're buying more and more tickets. We will never be able to completely uh, prevent the transmission of diseases from, from animals into humans. It has gone on uh, since we humans first appeared and uh, it's likely to, to continue. For spillover to occur and for a pathogen to, to move into human populations and be able to transmit between people, there's a huge number of barriers and the more that we learn about these barriers, the better we might be able to use them to our advantage. And this will involve changing human society, how we behave, in particular interfaces with wildlife and domesticated and farmed animals. We need to seriously consider investing and supporting um, food production systems, um, especially in the developing world, that, uh, that are responsible and that are adequate in relation to, to hygienic and, and safe food production. Because ultimately, as this pandemic shows, health problems can, um, can become global rather than being restricted at the national level. In addition to that, we should also look and identify um, alternatives for, uh, for products, whether that would be meat or skin or traditional medicine or, or any other animal products that are currently high risk, but which could be substituted with less risky alternatives, whether that's synthetic or um, plant-based alternatives. All of this has the potential to, to reduce the risks that, uh, that we are facing in relation to, to a potential new uh, pandemic of, um, of animal origin.